15th annual Batavia Lions Club Holiday Basketball Tournament. And both the Batavia Blue Devils and the Notre Dame Irish on the floor going through their pregame warm-ups. Timmy, we quick get this in here. In the consolation JV game today that was held over at Notre Dame, the Notre Dame Irish JVs defeated Alexander by a score of 50 to 35. And in the championship game, the Oakfield Alabama Hornets JV team defeating Batavia by a score of 70 to 52. On the varsity side, though, it's going to be Batavia and Notre Dame. Batavia, the defending champions, and Notre Dame looking to take the crown this year. And as I mentioned already, Tim, we're looking forward to this game, and it should be a good one between two pretty good basketball teams. Yes, and, and uh, the prestigious uh, tournament that they're in right now, it's really great. The, you know, a nice town like Batavia and city of Batavia and these two teams playing against one another. And the competition goes way back year from years ago uh, with great players. Uh, you know, I can remember a time watching Sonny Love and Andy Vogel go at it years ago playing all the way up to now and uh, the great players that, that are in this area. It's it's going to be fun. You got a lot of the community out to watch the basketball game, and we hope it's a good, spirited, competitive, hard-fought game. And uh, I'm sure it'll be all that uh, everyone has been looking forward to. Notre Dame playing in the Genesee Region League and Batavia in the Monroe County League, and with both schools, as you mentioned, being right here in Batavia, always a fun matchup when these two teams can get together. When I was a kid, I lived in Geneva for a few years in the Sales High School in Geneva High at the time. We're right across the street from each other, which made it kind of interesting. You know, if you were the road team, you walk across the street and go into their team's gym. But always a fun matchup when you get the two schools in the same city to go against each other. In the case here in this championship game for the Lions Club tournament here at GCC College, and you, know, you talk to a lot of different people, and they always talk about the Lions Club tournament, the great job they do, and how you know they'd really like to get here. And we're hoping to have Pete Harris, who is here tonight. And the reason you weren't here as well, we'll stick up for you here as we were looking for you the other night as Pete Harris' daughter getting married and the wedding was Saturday. It was kind of bad playing on his part, but nonetheless, you were at the wedding. But Pete is here tonight and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to him at halftime of tonight's Notre Dame Batavia game and see what the plans are for next year as both Oakfield and Alexander have been here for two years and normally it's pretty much a two-year run and they'll bring two new teams in here. So we'll definitely be checking that out at halftime. Keys for tonight's game though, for the Irish to defeat Batavia. What do you feel they have to do tonight? Well, both teams, again, uh, in their personnel are similar. Uh, they're, they're both uh, up-tempo basketball teams with good skill both inside and out. Uh, all their players are very exciting to watch. They're physical, they're athletic, and you're going to see some good athleticism on both sides. I think a key area is, is Mike Reddick right now for uh, Notre Dame. He, he's, he's a little taller. Uh, he's, a, he's a strong presence inside. I think that uh, he is someone that Batavia is going to have to look to defend against. And in any game, you're going to take something away and you're going to give something up. It'll be interesting to see if Batavia concentrates on taking Mike Reddick away. But both teams have a lot of tools, a lot of strength, and we're going to see a, a, a super athletic ball game today between both teams. It'll be interesting to see Batavia's full court defensive pressure did a real good job against Alexander the other night and and we'll see how head coach Mike Rapone and his Notre Dame team counters that defensive pressure trying to get the ball up the floor one thing what you can do when a team comes out and puts on backcourt defensive pressure like that if you can break it you get yourself into some odd man situations where you get two on ones three on twos for the easy baskets but you got to break the pressure first yes in a second clock 45 second clock is going to be do just that if you can press a team and make them use some time to get the ball to the floor it's less time to run their half court offense but if you beat a press by killing it and scoring off it that's when you got to back out of the press and both teams will come at you if you don't beat it by finishing if you just beat the press both teams will press as long as they can buddy brasky with the young team uh his jv team last year did win the championship and a lot of those players from last year's jv team up with this varsity this year and also a sophomore that's up with him this year and he had a big game the other night that was brian herdline he'll be wearing number 32 as batavia will be in their blue tonight herdline the sophomore finishing with 18 points in their win against alexander brian herdlines he's a nice shooter and uh and he's someone you can't leave alone right now we're just about set to go for the pregame introductions and batavia officially the visitors in tonight's game and they're in the road to blues Number five, Bob 
Griffin. Bob Griffin wearing number 44. Well, that's a change. Well, this isn't going to be good, is it? <laughs> Number 42, Scar Scott Parkers, Tim Carragher, and Aaron McFowlins rounding out the top five for Batavia. And now the starting lineup for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who will be under the hometown of the scoreboard. The guard, number 22, Vinny Panera. Vinny Panera wearing number 22, starting at one of the guards. And he'll be joined by Otis Thomas, wearing number 33, and... The only junior starter, number 23, Mike Sisson. And also starting for Notre Dame 42 is Paul Rogers. And one of the players you mentioned in the opening, Mike Reddick, he'll be wearing number 30. So Notre Dame, the home team, they're in their home white, Batavia in their visiting blue road uniforms. Well, this is the beginning of, of a real good contest. And it's gonna be interesting to see how Batavia High and Notre Dame match up because the chess game is set up and it's ready to go. As both teams, we're going to see how they make their first move and how they try and attack and win the game. So it's going to be the Batavia Blue Devils and the Notre Dame Irish, the 15th annual Lions Club Holiday Tournament. Both teams coming out on the floor in this game, just about set to get underway. Alex Nesbeth wearing number 14, also starting for Batavia. That's a late number change as well. Nesbeth will be wearing 14 in the blue jerseys tonight for Batavia High School. It's going to be Reddick and McFallins to start this game off, and we are underway as the tip goes over to Tim Carragher. And Batavia has it. And Thomas hustling for the ball, knocking it out of bounds. Well, at this point, it looks like a matchup 2-3. And, and, and Notre Dame, what they've done out of that, they've trapped out of that before. And they've been more conservative. It, it looks as if it's a matchup 2-3 zone. And we'll see how they manipulate this defense as the game goes on. Griffin's going to let the three go. And it's rebounded underneath by Rogers, and quickly Notre Dame coming up the floor, and that's what I talked to Mike Capone about. Likes to play that transition basketball. You can see it right there. They got the rebound. They're running the floor with the pass thrown away. Intercepted by McFollins. Coming back, McFollins with the layup and the first points of the game. I'll tell you, that's how you run a two-on-one right there. The angle, he had the angle all the way. Two-on-one, kept it in his own hands and scored. Quickly, right again. Didn't see Rogers breaking back door. Rogers would have had the easy layup had he been able to see him. Yes, you're a good point guard, Rick. Oh, yeah, from up here, it's pretty easy, isn't it? <laughs> a little easier to see the floor. And the basket right there. Batavia is showing a man-to-man -man pressure. As Bobby Griffin got hit in the back with the basketball as it goes over to Notre Dame. I believe it was Paul Rogers with the first bucket for Notre Dame. So we're tied at two. We played one minute into this game. Thomas bringing up Griffin, putting on the backcourt pressure. That's basketball right there. Making a point guard work to get the ball up the basketball court. Bobby Griffin, nice defense. Third offensive rebound shot back in. Sisson again put it up, doesn't go, but he'll get the shot. Notre Dame with three offensive rebounds. Timmy, every offensive rebound giving you a shot to get a basket and results in Sisson going to the free throw line. That's aggressiveness. And right now, Notre Dame just doing a nice job of attacking the boards and making things happen. Again, good defense by... Uh, Nesbitt to, to really work and Griffin to work Otis Thomas. That makes it tough on a point guard to come down and have to work that far to bring the ball up the court. Doesn't give him that easy look either if you're making him work bringing it up the floor where he can really look over the floor on the way up. Sisson missing both free throws but another rebound. Again the shot missed. Tap back out to half court. Thomas coming up to save it so Notre Dame keeps possession. Here's Reddick, seven-footer, and it goes. Mike Reddick, nice touch inside. Good aggressiveness by Notre Dame to this point offensively. Notre Dame with a 4-2 lead. 6.20 remaining here in this opening quarter. Tim Carragher taking it to the basket. Shot doesn't go. Notre Dame coming back the other way. Vinny Panero with it for the Irish. Nice ball movement by Batavia High to get a great opportunity for a scoring situation. 
Sisson getting it to Redick and a whistle underneath. Well, there's there's a situation there. If you don't get your hand and foot in the passing lane and you don't get out in front, you're gonna could be called for a foul, and that's what happened. He got caught behind the player a little bit in trying to deny the post. Ryan Herline checking into the game for Batavia. He'll replace Scott Partridge. So Herline the sophomore with 18 points in the opening game into the game for the Blue Devils. Sisson taking it to the basket, doesn't go. Griffin there for the rebound. And Griffin quickly is gonna bring it back himself. Taking it to the basket. Nice coast to coast, but it doesn't go. Tapped around and finally taken by Sisson for Notre Dame. Good athletic move by Griffin. He had he had a nice three on two situation. He decided to go to the basket, had a layup opportunity. We were kind of laughing during pregame warrants about those young legs. You could see him working there. Nice drive by Thomas. Spins out though. He and certainly coming can, back Rick. is Nesbitt. <laughs> Nesbitt, the other end, off the glass and in. Beautiful move by Nesbitt. Wrist roll crossover dribble to the left side for two points. Nice move. Thomas has Rodgers, gets it to him. Rodgers in the corner. Gets Reddick inside quickly out to Sisson. Sisson will take the shot. It's in. Well, right now, Mike Reddick is having himself a great game. Pass inside from Rodgers to Reddick back out to Sisson. Beautiful inside out basketball. And that was a two. So with the basket, it's a 6-4 to four Notre Dame lead. Sisson just having his foot on the arc. Oh, they gave that a two-point, Gave it a two. I thought it was a three when he let it go. I never saw the signal, and they put two up on the board, so. Ball tapped out of bounds. Batavia's going to keep a couple more substitutions for Batavia. Ricky Lundy wearing number 30, and number 34, Mark Thompson. Well, last year, Mike Sisson, uh, coming into the season, he, he had some injury problems, and he's coming in real healthy this year. You can see the, the speed and athleticism that he has. Nice pass from Nesbitt back to herd line to Lundy for the shot. Lundy shot miss, rebound by Rodgers, up to Sisson. So Lundy just getting into the game, getting a shot away. Doesn't go, though. And Notre Dame with a 6-4 to four lead. Four and a half minutes to go here in this opening quarter. Lundy coming up with a steal. Lundy with the layup. Steal and the layup ties the game up. Well, we sure are seeing the athleticism this game to this point. Benara will let him go for the three-pointer, and he puts it right to the bottom of the net. I'll tell you, Rick, from here, you know, when you see a young man get the ball up in the air like that, elbow in, and reaching up with that confidence, you're going to be successful a lot of times. Benara, he got a beautiful arc on that he had shot. 13 points, the win against Oakfield, three three-pointers. And Batavia's not going to let him be able to stay open at the top like they to take that shot because he will put it in. Here comes Fenara back for Notre Dame. Nice handling skills by Fenara as he pulls up for a two-pointer. Reddick almost had the offensive rebound, had it poked away, and here comes Lundy back for Batavia. Lundy taking it to the basket. He's got it. We're seeing some great decisions by these young athletes. Lundy kept it in his hands, and that's confidence in ball hand of their ball handling skills. Rodgers, 18-footer, he's got it. As we're in for a great game as Notre Dame's got an 11-8 lead. Paul Rodgers with four points. His brother Kevin Rodgers at the scorer's table. He's going to come into the game. Kevin Rodgers finishing with 13 points in the opening night win against Oakfield. Lundy down the baseline, getting it back out. That's what's going to take the shot. Off the front of the rim, but coming in to get the rebound and a foul underneath. Irvine good, came in. That was a good call by the official because in that situation, he did get hit. But Mike came down with the ball, and as he got hit, he fell to the ground, and then they made the call. And it, it's, it's, as a result, it caused the play to, to stop play. So th that was a nice call for the official to make. Chuck Higgins coming into the game for Batavia along with Bob Griffin. Her line driving in, offensive call. Nice presence by Mike Reddick in the lane. Get himself in position for that charge. Definitely had his position established there. And drew the charging fouls. So Another name will get the ball back with an 11 to 8 lead. And the horn goes at the scorer's table. Inadvertent, the play continues on. Right now they're in a, a, a zone defense. And, in, and when you to beat a zone defense, you've got to beat it with the pass. And this is a good move by Batavia High right now. Thomas, shot spins out. Rogers rebound, put back up and in. Well, and we probably could Rogers. count. There's been probably seven to eight offensive rebounds to this point for Notre Dame, which has been a factor. Griffin looking to go inside. 
Kicking it back out, the three taken and hit by Mark Thompson. Nice shot by Mark Thompson, getting the ball up in the air, getting his feet gathered and shooting it up for a three-pointer. And there's Brink in the press and it goes right over to Rogers the Rogers. Rogers for two points. Yeah, I should, yeah, should mention now Kevin Rogers wearing 34. See, it's easy when it's Rogers. <laughs> now it's Kevin and Paul. Oh, you'll get it right that way. <laughs> Put three more of them out there. This will be real simple. <laughs> Ball going to stay down at this end of the floor as Batavia has. Batavia trailing Notre Dame 15 to 11 with 153 remaining here in this opening quarter of play. Ricky Lundy with the ball, Griffin on top. Notre Dame still in a 2-3 matchup, which has been fairly successful. Griffin driving inside, spins out, Reddick tapping the ball still up. Ricky Lundy finally getting it for Batavia. And a travel call, Lundy trying to get the pass out. What this 2-3 matchup zone does is it gives you the opportunity to take away inside play. And they're saying, Batavia beat us with the jumper right now. And, and right now, they really haven't done that like Batavia would like to. And a nice three-way passing play. Finished off with Paul Rogers hitting his eighth point. But there was a good point how Notre Dame was patient. They broke it. Nice three-way pass down low. Rogers putting it in for the basket in a 17 to 11 lead. Nice left hand. Nice left hand. Griffin thought about it, then he spotted Lundy inside. Lundy's shot was missed, so nice look by Griffin as he spotted Ricky Lundy open underneath. Yes, he's a strong young man, too. He bench pressed that ball very quickly into Ricky Lundy for a great opportunity. Paul Rogers over to Kevin Rogers and a travel call. Microphone happy with the play of Kevin Rogers coming in off the bench this year. He says he comes in for a know he's got like 12, 14 points. He had 13 in the opening game. Yeah, yes, he's a, he's a good young man. He's quick. He makes a good move, plays good defense, and he's a very nice shooter. Thompson's going to take the three. He's got it. That, that comes out of his hands like a feather. A beautiful looking shot as it rotates nice, and he gets a nice three-point basket for Batavia High. His second three-pointer of this quarter. He's got six now. Here's Reddick. Left hand. Doesn't go. Doesn't go, Higgins coming back. Chuck Higgins with the layup. So Higgins with the rebound, brought it down. Nobody collapsed on him, and Chuck Higgins Good made decision. the basket. Good decision, kept in his hands till he was stopped. Nice decision. That basket pulling Batavia to within one at 17 to 16. 10 seconds remaining on the clock here in the first quarter of play. Thomas trying to take it inside, no whistle. Lundy has it, clock with three seconds left. Two, one, Lundy with the one run hand. Say running one-hander, say that 10 times fast, doesn't go. First quarter is over, and Notre Dame will take a one-point lead at the end of one. It's 17 to 16. We'll take a short timeout, come back for the start of the second quarter right after this. Thanks to you, there is a ray of hope. With the money you give us, we make wonderful change 365 days a year. Give to the Salvation Army now and throughout the year, because need knows no season. Rick Krasinski back with Tim Sullivan, live from Genesee Community College in Batavia. The Irish of Notre Dame with a one-point lead over Batavia High School, 17-16. At the end of the first quarter of play of the 15th annual Batavia Lions Club Holiday Basketball Tournament, Tim, very entertaining first quarter of play. Oh, it sure was. Uh, real good opportunities for both teams. Good defensive plays, some good decisions made on offense. It was real fun to watch as the, the speed and quickness and strength. We're going to have a great time tonight. Notre Dame with the basketball to start the second quarter of play. Time is with it. Bob Griffin on him. Griffin coming up with a steal. Griffin with the layup, giving Batavia a one-point lead. There you go. That That's just Bobby Griffin just is a one heck of an athlete. Good defense. Thomas back the other way, a three on two over to Reddick. Reddick inside, doesn't go. And out of bounds was Aaron McFallins as he was coming back in, but a good call by Bob Parker as McFallins was out of bounds, came back in to get the ball. Otis Thomas made a beautiful pass to Mike Reddick, and that's something that if it works, use it. 
Nice pass to, to, to Mike Reddick as he bounces right back to make a real nice play for Notre Dame. Kevin Rogers, nice move inside and he gets it. You know, some players are just slippery. They, you, you know, just when you think you got them defended, they, they jump that little extra inch or, or lean a little bit forward and that's how he is as he makes a nice defensive play. Almost came up with the steal, but you kind of see kind of double clutch about the brawl underneath and got the open shot for the basket. And that basket giving Notre Dame a one point lead. It's 19 to 18 with 7.15 remaining here in the second quarter of play. Scott Partridge wearing number 42. Getting it down to Lundy. Thomas stepping in front of the pass back out. Otis Thomas to the basket. It's missed. Tapped around. And Ricky Lundy has it for Batavia. Knocked out of bounds by Otis Thomas. So Batavia's going to keep the basketball. Otis Thomas, you, you got to like someone that comes down, misses a layup opportunity. Batavia uh, has the basketball and just hustles on defense. And that's, that shows good signs of character in, in a young man and a young athlete. Chuck Higgins checking back into the game for Batavia. He replaced Ricky Lundy. Bob Griffin wearing 44 with the basketball. Dishing it back out to Mark Thompson. And a travel call before the shot. Thompson with a couple three-pointers in that first quarter for Batavia, letting one go, but getting called for the travel. Thompson's out of the game now. He'll be replaced by Alex Nesbitt. Batavia with that full backcourt pressure, but a nice pass inside to Rogers. Over to Reddick. Reddick, reverse layup. Rebounded by McFarland. Well, right now, uh, Mike Reddick, he's just missing his layups a little bit, but, yeah, you know, he's going to get that together as time goes on. And, and Batavia High's really flying at him also, which, which I'm sure has some to do with it. And Batavia throwing out of bounds, so Notre Dame getting the ball back. Kevin Rogers, 34 with it, up to Fanara. See, Notre Dame being very patient, making the nice passes up to break the zone trap press in the backcourt, so doing a nice job of doing that. Here's Fanara going inside. Vinny Fanara shot miss. Reddick got a hand on it, tried to put it back up. Well, I gotta say, that, that's a college type of defense, what Batavia High just did. Is that Bobby Griffin drives in for a layup. Full frontal, 94 feet basketball. That's fun to watch, fun to watch. And then they come with a different type of defense, this time down half court man to man. Coach Brasky, nice decisions he's making defensively to this point. Bob Griffin's bucket giving Batavia a one point lead, 20 to 19. So we've had quite a few lead changes already in this game. 6.02 remaining in the second quarter. And right now Batavia up by the one point. So we had a very entertaining opening quarter as Notre Dame had a 17 to 16 lead at the end of one. And Otis Thomas taking a timeout before he gets whistled for the five second call. And right now it's Batavia 20, Notre Dame 19 with the timeout being taken by Notre Dame. Nice senior uh, decision by Otis Thomas. Comley, uh, really, they, uh, you only get four and a half seconds to throw the ball in because you're, you're supposed to blow the violation but when it hits. It's supposed to hit the player's hand inbounds within five seconds, and Otis wisely causes the, calls the timeout to get his team out of a turnover situation. Take a look at the Notre Dame bench and the score there, 20-19, to 19, Batavia on top. Six minutes, two seconds remaining in the second quarter play. Rick Krasinski along with Tim Sullivan. And this reminder, coming up this Saturday night, we'll be back here at 6.30 for the girls tournament, the Rotary Club tournament. We'll have the consolation game at 6.30, the championship game at about 8, 8.15. That tournament kicking off this Thursday night at 6.30 right here, Genesee Community College. Yes, those will be real good games. Uh, Batavia High coming from the very competitive Monroe County League. And then Notre Dame, Alexander, and Oakfield, very competitive. Genesee, Genesee League also, GR region. Uh, those teams in the Genesee region are very, very competitive, and that should be a very interesting tournament to watch. So Notre Dame set to go. Thomas will inbound for the Irish, and he gets it over to Kevin Rogers. Well, I'll tell you, Coach Brasky. Got a hand check out. Co top. Coach Bransky does a nice thing on this press. Instead, they set a screen down low, and what he does when you do that, you automatically switch. It's an automatic switch, and it makes you still stay in that one pass away denial situation. Paul Rogers, 42 with the ball over to Thomas. Panara trying to get it out to Reddick. Reddick picks it up. And 
Paul Rogers shot is missed and coming back for Batavius Chuck Higgins Higgins with a block this time and that was a good call as as Rogers not quite set that time and good good call by the official uh, who played for Syracuse University by the way the official down there um, Dave Parker's his name and uh, he just uh, with uh, four, number 40 did for Batavia as he drove in, made a great decision. Higgins. Higgins with the ball right now. Davis setting up their offense. Griffin has it up on top. Griffin looking to drive inside. Thomas stepping in front, though. And a nice pass inside to Higgins. He's a nice addition to Batavia High's basketball team. He's a transfer student. Uh, who uh, is a very nice find for Batavia. Only a sophomore as well. I said Batavia with a young team. Nice pass. Good ball movement. Pass inside. Good seal by Mike Reddick. Reddick with his fourth point of the game. And Notre Dame coming with a steal as Reddick gets it. Some hard work by Thomas in for an hour. Stripped away by Griffin. No foul call. Griffin doesn't like it. He almost came up with the pick clean, but did get nailed with the foul. I'll tell you, on the playground, you wouldn't be calling a foul on that one. That would not be a foul on the playground. But in a basketball game, that's a foul. That and it was close, foul. so he came close to getting it. It's close. Tim Carragher coming into the game along with Mark Thompson for Batavia. Batavia on top by a point, 22 to 21 with 450 remaining here in the second quarter. And still in their up-tempoed man-to-man defense. Thomas getting whistled on the traveling call. He tried and Rick, to... is there any other defense? That it should be up-tempo at all times, depending on what level of the court you are, you are defending against. Four and a half to go now in the second quarter. 22-21 to David. Nesbitt getting the pass to McFarlane. Kicked it back over to Partridge. Inside, Carragher has it knocked away. It's going to stay there. A nice presence of Partridge to drive baseline, come to a jump stop, do the double team, split the double team with a nice pass into Carragher. Brian Herdline checking back into the game for Batavia. And a three there. Or Brian Herdline, his first points of the game. Rick, he's been patient tonight. You know, he hasn't really had a good look yet. He hasn't forced anything. And Brian Herdline, his first shot was a basket. Good patience after having a real successful night in the game before they played in this tournament. That opens up a four-point lead for Batavia. Here's Reddick, 10-footers in. Oh, Rock, Kevin Rogers with a beautiful pass. Presence to know that Mike Reddick's going to come to the basket. Wonderful pass by Kevin Rogers to Mike Reddick for two points. Yeah, that's one thing I noticed in their opening game. Notre Dame in that game uh, against Oakfield is a traveling call being called against Batavia. Throughout the contest, they were just making one nice pass after another. It was really a joy to watch the game, the way they were moving the basketball around. You just saw an example on their last trip down the court. Beautiful. With the pass. That's just knowing the offense and knowing where his there. teammates are going to be. Almost another one, but instead Thomas getting called on the charge as he let the pass go, but then getting called on the charging foul. Mark Thompson, did it. What, what a nice thing to do to a player that really can, can break through defenses is just say, hey, you're, you're coming too fast down this lane, and he took a nice offensive charge on a very good Otis Thomas guard. Her line over to Thompson, it's in. Mark Thompson, his third three-pointer of the game, and you being a guard that loves those threes, are liking what you're seeing with that shot. Yes, he, he takes the right shot. Uh, he's three for four from the field right now in, in three-point range, playing good defense. He's a nice player. Thomas tried to answer back at the other end. His shot's missed, but a whistle underneath. Foul going to be called against Batavia. Brian Herdline picking up the foul. Not all of his shots, they, they come off like feathers. They're smooth and soft. And he gets the ball up in the air, which his result is 75% effective from a long way out. Paul Rogers shot missed. And it comes back out on top where Paul Rogers has it once again. Thomas trying to go baseline. He does. It gets a shot up and in. Nice move, nice baseline move. Kiss off the glass for two points for Otis Thomas. Nesbitt had that ball kind of carry along with them before he got it down to the floor and they caught him on it.
243 remaining here in the second quarter. I've got to speak on Alex Nesbitt's behalf. This young man does many ball handling drills every day of his training time when he's training, working on his ball handling. He's a very hard worker. I'm sure that bothered him very much. Reddick like intercepting the pass. Notre Dame trailing by three. Batavia up 28-25. Thomas and to Rogers, and he's going to be fouled underneath. So Paul Rogers will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Paul Rogers with eight points in the opening quarter for Notre Dame. He hasn't scored yet here in the second, a chance to do so. Yes, he'll go to the free throw line. Ricky Lundy and Bob Griffin checking back in for Batavia. Alex Nesbitt and Tim Carragher coming out of the game for Batavia. Paul Rogers on that drive to the basket, received the basketball, pump fake, drove to the basket, came to a two-foot jump stop, which gave him many opportunities and the ability to fake, to go straight up, depending on what the defensive pressure gave him. And if an athlete can do that and you're shorter than your opponent, you can be successful several times in a basketball game. Rogers missing both free throws. Panera underneath almost coming with the rebound. We have a whistle. Ricky Lundy getting called underneath, so Notre Dame will keep it, and they're a bonus, so. Ricky Lundy picking up his first foul. So Vinny Fanera going to the free throw line. Shoot one and one. Fanera with three points in the game. He hit a three-pointer back in the first quarter. Violation blew, they actually blew the whistle a little too soon. Fenero missed the shot anyway. As Brian Herline got into the lane just a little too soon, and Fenero capitalizes on that. And second one's in. Nice free throws by Fenera, and it's a regimen. You do the same things each time a lot of shooters do, and, and he gets the ball up in the air real well. Griffin's threes miss. Reddick got up to tap it over to Kevin Rogers, and with two minutes to go here in the second quarter, Notre Dame trailing by a point, but they do have the basketball. Paul Rogers shot off the back of the rim, and it's rebounded by Batavia. Well, Paul's getting a good look right now, and, he, and he's on the rim. You know, some, some uh, good shooters have said, hey, if you're off front or back, that's okay. So he'll get it together as Aaron McFollins hits a basket for Batavia High. McFollins fourth point of the game, giving Batavia a three-point lead. It's 30-27 to 27 with a minute and a half to go until halftime. Thomas driving to the basket, lost it, went off of his back, out of bounds. So Batavia's going to get it back. Notre Dame had a one-point lead at the end of the first quarter, 17-16. And right now, Batavia up by 3, 30 to 27. Griffin has it taken away. Thomas with the basketball. McFarland's back, and the shot's missed, and rebounded by Herdline. Herdline over to Lundy. Lundy kicking it back out. McFarland's going to take the three. He's got it. Well, good ball moving by Batavia High to get the good shot. They got the good shot right there by McFarland's. Collins three, giving Batavia a six-point lead with a minute left. Thomas again driving to the basket, can't get it to go. And here comes Batavia, Griffin, he's got Thompson on his right, trying to get to him, but Panara stepping in front of that pass, knocking out of bounds, and Mike Sisson getting up off the bench. He'll come back into the game for Notre Dame. And for Batavia, Scott Partridge checking back in. Sisson replacing Thomas. Well, I'll tell you, Otis Thomas, he's had good opportunities. They're layups, and, uh, you know, Bobby Griffin, they're playing super defense. He's pressing Otis to, to play ball. Lundy was cut off by Reddick. And a nice play by Thompson to save it for Batavia. And Batavia will bring it back out and start it up again. Batavia spreading the floor out. Lundy, nice fake, driving to the basket. Doesn't go, though. And Panara has the rebound for Notre Dame. Well, but the ABI is doing just what you should do against the zone. They're beating it with a pass, ball fakes, and movement. Rogers over to Reddick. Reddick going to pull up, take the shot. Eight points for Mike Reddick. You said he was going to be the key for Notre Dame, and Reddick with eight points. Him and Paul Rogers, the leading scorers for Notre Dame. Griffin, the other end, Reddick with the rebound. 
And the horn goes to end the first half of play. So we completed one. It's been a fast-paced first half of play. And as the teams go into the locker rooms at halftime, the Batavia Blue Devils have a four-point lead over Notre Dame. It's 33-29. to 29. We're going to take a short timeout, and we'll come back, and we'll have Pete Harris from the Lions Club to join us right after this. You're backing up too much. You're backpedaling too much. Slide your feet and cut them off. Don't let Hanson get it. Don't let Hanson get it, Fred. Oh, Wait, you cut them now. Oh, right there, Chris. Hi, I'm Bob McKinnon, associate head basketball coach here at Niagara University. Here with me is one of our standout players, Chris Watson. We asked Chris and his teammates to work extremely hard during the course of the year in conditioning, practice, and in games. It can be awfully tough. Then how hard do you think it is when we ask our players to say no to drugs? You see, it's not that hard at all. Make the right decision. Just say no to drugs. More than 140,000 Americans have joined Peace Corps Returning home, their experiences last a lifetime. Meet Lily Lindsay, a teacher in Virginia, and Scott Truex, a mayor and business owner in Colorado. The challenges that I faced as a Peace Corps worker were the same for me as a public schools teacher. Now I have a more global view of things. The one aspect of the Peace Corps that really helped me in business and as the mayor of Crested Butte was learning how to work with people and learning how to hear all sides of the issues. After having served as a Peace Corps volunteer, I have a full appreciation of the importance of setting goals. Peace Corps really helped me to learn about responsibility and what it means to, to help other people. If you have a love for teaching, um, you'll find that that translates in any language or culture. Peace Corps has probably been the single thing that has impacted my life more than anything else. Peace Corps volunteers, changing America and changing the world. See how you can make a difference. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Our carbon monoxide detector went off last night, but we knew what to do. Fortunately, everyone felt fine, so we didn't need to call the fire department. Instead, Dan shut off our fuel-burning appliances and opened windows for ventilation. And I called to have our heating system checked. Turns out, the CO detector warned us of a correctable problem before it could harm our family. If you got kids, then you ought to know they're gonna need lots of shots as they grow. Not the shots through a net, but the kind that they get from your doctor or clinic. That's your best bet. Shots, shots. Get those shots. Now shots cost money. We know that's true. But vaccines for children can see you through. It's a free vaccine. And oh, what a thrill to get your kids shots without a big bill. So call this number to learn a lot and give your kids health your very best shot. Shots, shots. Get those shots. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you if your heart is young. And here is the best part, you'll have a head start if you are among the ones whose heart is young. A picture, a gesture, a rhyme, a turn, express, relate, and learn. Krasinski back live from Genesee Community College in Batavia, 33-29. Batavia on top of Notre Dame. And now joining me from the Lions Club is Tim Buckley stepping in for Pete Harris. A quick last-minute substitution, Tim. And something happened down the floor, and Pete had to run down quickly. 
Exciting first half of play between Notre Dame and Batavia. Both teams going up and down the floor, a four-point lead for Batavia. Yes, it is, Rich. Uh, just exactly the way we thought it'd go. Uh, both teams are uh, really playing excellently, I think, and uh, I'm looking forward to the second half. One thing I, I wanted to ask Pete, and I'm sure you know the answer to this, with both Oakfield and Alexander being in their second year, the normal pattern is for after teams to be here for two years, we get some new teams in. We got any ideas about who might be coming in next year? I don't really know. That's uh, entirely up to Peter. He He's the brain uh, to the whole operation, and uh, I'm sure he's got some great teams in mind. Uh, but offhand, I don't know who he's bringing in next year. One thing nice, as we always talk about every year with this Lions Club tournament, is the crowd that it draws here and the hard work and the time that the Lions Club does put in this tournament. Quite a bit of time to run off a tournament like this. Absolutely. It takes a lot of uh, manpower, and it's all volunteer basis, and uh, you got to take a couple of nights out of your, your uh, time and to come out here and, uh, and lend a helping hand to Peter, who's done a tremendous job uh, throughout the years. Uh, his efforts are just uh, phenomenal. And, and as we can see, all was something going on. As we were just about set to talk to Pete, and all of a sudden he was being called down there. As I think we had uh, somebody injured down there, so Pete running down. Tim, you're nice enough to fill in here at halftime. Right now, Batavia with a four-point lead over Notre Dame. It's the 15th annual Batavia Lions Club holiday tournament, and the Batavia Blue Devils with their four-point lead. But one thing, Tim, the way this game is going, this lead flip, flip, uh, flopping back and forth throughout the first half, I think we can see that continuing probably in the second half. Yes, absolutely, Rich, and I'm uh, looking forward to it again. Well, Tim, I'd like to thank you for stepping in quickly on last-minute notice to join us up here for halftime. Tim Buckley from the Lions Club filling in quickly here for Pete Aris as we are at halftime between Notre Dame and Batavia, the Batavia High Blue Devils with a 33-29 lead over the Notre Dame Irish. We'll take a short time out, come back to recap the scoring of the first half and have the start of the second half right after this. Boy, amateur radio sparked my interest in science. I spent the next 20 years studying radio signals from distant stars to help test and confirm Einstein's theory of gravity. For that work, I won the Nobel Prize. Whether you want to be a physicist or just make a lot of new friends, a technician class amateur radio license can help you discover new worlds. It's fun and it's easy to do. So go for it. You never know who you'll meet on the air. In an emergency, doctors you've never met will have only moments to make decisions about your care. They'll need information quickly, your conditions, allergies, medications, physician and family contacts. But you may be unconscious or in so much pain that you can't recall critical details and the risk of complications can increase significantly. Medic Alert provides this information within seconds. Help us help you by wearing the Medic Alert emblem. Call now for free information. I'm Tom Landry and over the years I've worked with many gifted athletes. But for some children, even taking one step can be difficult. That's why there are 22 Shriners Hospitals for crippled children. Shriners help children under 18 by providing some of the world's finest medical care, and it's always free. If you know someone like Tina that these fellows in the red hats can help, call this number. Right, Tina? Right. Shriners Hospitals, 1-800-237-5055. Krasinski back live from Genesee Community College in Batavia. We're at halftime in the championship game between Batavia High and Notre Dame and the Batavia Blue Devils with a 33-29 lead over the Irish and Notre Dame. Recapping the scoring in the first half, starting with the Batavia Blue Devils, it was Aaron McFarland. Well, check that. Mark Thompson leading the way with nine points. Thompson scoring all nine points on three three-pointers. Aaron McFallens right behind him as Aaron McFallens finishing the first half with seven points. And then Bob Griffin, Chuck Higgins, and Ricky Lundy each finishing with four points. Ryan Herdline had three. And Alex Nesbitt with a basket for the Batavia Blue Devils. For the Irish of Notre Dame, it was Mike Reddick and Paul Rogers each scoring eight points for Notre Dame. Vinny Fanara had five points. Kevin Rogers with four and Mike Sisson and Otis Thomas, each which with a basket. And as I mentioned, Batavia with a four-point lead, 33 to 29. 
fast-paced first half of play. Both teams quickly up and down the floor. A lot of lead changes in that first half of play. Notre Dame took a one-point lead at the end of one as they led it 17 to 16. But then Batavia came back to outscore Notre Dame in the second quarter, 17 to 12, to take the four-point lead in at halftime. Special thanks to Tim Buckley for stepping in at halftime from the Lions Club. As we mentioned, Pete Harris was all set to join us, and then there was an injury down on the Notre Dame bench or in front of the Notre Dame bench. Don't actually know what happened, and Pete Harris had to go down there, so Tim Buckley jumping in at the last minute. And Tim Sullivan back along with me, Tim. Good first half of play. We're looking forward to a good second half as well. Yes, uh, we had a nice defensive uh, second quarter, and uh, it picked up a little bit, and uh, first quarter was very fast moving as now we move into the second half of the game. Carragher getting the pass over to McBounds, back to Carragher, getting inside, shot miss, getting his own rebound, trying one more time, and a whistle this time. Carragher is one of those young men that he's been playing throughout the system. Uh, he's, he's worked hard. He's uh, you know, paid some time uh, watching some basketball games earlier in his career. And now you can just see that this young man is, you know, the presence he had underneath there over a big Mike Reddick was, was very good as he stuck with it, used his body well, pump faked, and got himself to the foul line, which, uh, which really helped him out. Carragher hitting one of two to open up a five-point Batavia lead. And then Scott Partridge stepping in front of the pass. Batavia coming back with it as Alex Nesbitt has it for the Blue Devils to Griffin. Griffin quickly, nice pass, but just off the hands of Carragher. Then driving inside was Partridge. Batavia keeping it, though. And shot up off the glass by Carragher. So Carragher with three quick points here to start this third quarter of play. Sisson had the pass go off the back and didn't see it. Nesbitt coming back, Nesbitt taking the basket, missed it, but the Fallons was right there for the putback. Boy, a lot of nice things just happened there for Batavia. And Mike Rapone taking a quick timeout. As yes, Batavia has scored five quick points in the first 53 seconds here. Gerger did, did some nice things, and, and I was starting to interrupt you, Rick, because Batavia did so many good things in just a few, few moments there. They had good presence inside. Um, sprung, a, sprung a new type of defense at them, and they've been changing up defensively, and it's really thrown Notre Dame off a little bit in this first minute of the second half. And then Alex Nesbitt on a two-on-one situation made a nice little head fake, wrist roll, crossover back to his left hand, and then up with a right-handed layup on the left side, which, which ended in a Notre Dame timeout. And I think when you come out of locker room, whether it's the start of the game, the start of the half, they always tell your team, let's have a good start, let's have a good start. Buddy Brasky in the first 53 seconds got what he wanted, a quick five points, and his team jumping up to a, a nine-point lead, 38-29, to 29, as they increase that, that four-point lead they had at halftime. And now Batavia goes to their full frontal, 94-feet defensive play, and Mike Sisson breaks the press. Sisson trying to get the pass over to Reddick as he was being trapped. The pass going out of bounds, so Batavia causing a couple turnovers here in the early going of the third quarter of play. Yes, Notre Dame did a nice, real nice job in the first half breaking that, but Batavia now putting on some pressure. Yes, they have, and they've changed up a little bit, which, is, uh, which has helped them, and it's thrown Notre Dame off the last two or three possessions down the floor. Rogers stepping in front of the pass that Lundy had intended for Brian Herdline. And, and again, Notre Dame, that 2-3 matchup has been successful when it's been in a half-court situation. And, and they're staying in that right now as Paul Rogers made a real nice defensive play to give Notre Dame the ball back, still down only nine points. Thomas, oh, the nice save there because that would have been an over back. He got to Rogers. Here's Fanara, the turnaround. It's missed and rebounded by McFarland. Nice play by Otis Thomas there. That was a very clever pass. Griffin driving the lane, kicking it back out. McFallon's thought about it. Nice pass back to Griffin. Quickly back out. Nesbitt, he's going to take the three. Off the back of the rim, though. Rebound by Herdline. Here's Griffin. And he stepped into it. They're going to call him on the traveling call. I'll tell you, Rick, his athleticism is very exciting. He draws a crowd, doesn't he? And then he'll draw three, four players on his drive and kick it out to different people to have shooting opportunities. 
Kevin Rogers checking into the game for Sisson. Rogers with the ball. Pass over to his brother Paul for the easy basket. Kevin That's how you Rogers. break it, huh? To Paul Rogers. Very nicely done, yes. Positioning is very important in breaking the press. And that puts Paul Rogers into double figures. As that is his 10th point. The Collins inside, getting it back out. And it's Saber. Kevin Rogers was there and a foul. Yes, Kevin Rogers got out of McFallon's trying to tie him up, but McFallon's going to get called with the piling on. <laughs> They're going to walk out the 15 yards out for a late hit, maybe. Right, he was down already. <laughs> 38-31. Batavia up by seven. McFallon's knocking the pass away. Here comes Griffin back for Batavia. He's going to let it go off the glass. It's Miss Rogers tapping it underneath. And then Fanara coming back. Kevin Rogers found himself free. Shot though off the back of the rim. So a few times tonight, Timmy. Notre Dame getting inside, but just can't get that shot to go down. Yeah, and it's funny. You know, that dotted line area just in front of the foul line is a real interesting area. A lot of coaches say shoot it straight in. Others will teach to bank it off the backboard from that area. It's interesting. Personally, I feel it should be banked in less uh, of a special situation, but that's a bank shot. You can bank those. Whistle underneath it. Thomas was taken to the basket. Foul call going to go against Bob Griffin of Batavia. His second foul. Only the second team foul here in the half, and Griffin coming out of the game as Mark Thompson comes in for Batavia. Thompson finishing with nine points in the first half, all nine points coming on three three-pointers. Here's Thomas taking it to the basket. This time it goes in. Yes, and he, see, the, those few shots he took in the first half, those are good shots for Otis. He had those opportunities. He proves that he can slice through the defense. If he's got an opportunity to lay one in, he should do that, and that's what the defense is giving him right now. Nice shot, Otis. 38-33, Batavia by five. Ricky Lundy from the elbow. Doesn't go. Kevin Rogers along with her line bailing. Now Fernara jumping in. That's going to be a jump ball in the possession arrow in Notre Dame's favor. That's like fighting for a fumble right there. They're covering up to see who's going to come up with it. So after Batavia got out to the quick start, scoring the first five, Notre Dame has come back, scored the last four points, and they have the basketball. Yes, Rick, Notre Dame was down four points at halftime. Now they're only down five, so uh, Notre Dame's on a little mini run right now. Another tie-up, and since it just happened 10 seconds ago, I don't even have to look at the possession arrow. It's going to be Batavia's ball this time. See, this is how it works. Clock stop with 4.16 to go in the third. 38-33. Batavia up by five. That's within sight of McFowlins. Quickly kicking it back out to Thompson. That one doesn't go. Whistle underneath is going to go against Batavia. Well, it's funny how, you know, players got a great memory. Kids three for four from the field. McFowlins could have turned around and dumped it. There he saw his good old teammate out there. Hey, he's, he's shooting the ball. Let's get it to him. And, and he was only off by a hair. Keep getting it to him. Next foul going against Notre Dame. So Batavia with it, but a traveling call against Nesbitt. So it's going to go back over to Notre Dame. Just inside, four minutes to go in the third. Nice spin move. Thomas to the basket. It goes in. Nice move there. Ah, yes, the old uh, reverse dribble. And boy, did he do it nice. I wish I had that one to show kids right there. Nice little, move. Little Dean the Dream Meminger move or Clyde Frazier, huh? Okay, I'm Earl going back. Pearl. <laughs> going back. Earl the Pearl Monroe. We're going back. It's okay to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Those some good moves right there and good people. <laughs> 38 35. Batavia up by three. So Notre Dame cutting into this lead. Ball going out of bounds. Which way are they going to call? Notre Dame is going to get it. Griffin coming back in. He'll be joined by Tim Carragher. Aaron McFounds and Alex Nesbeth coming out of the game for Batavia. Well, Notre Dame's, uh, they're upbeat on their defense right now. If they're playing hard, and, and, and that's what winners do. Teams that, that know how to win fight their way back. 
And right now, both of these teams are both the same type of ball club. That's why this game is so exciting. Rogers with the three, doesn't go. And her line's there for Batavia. Fenara trying to tie him up, but her line breaks away. Thomas with the reach, no call. Pass inside, taken by Reddick. Reddick goes smartly, pulling it back. Nice decision by Reddick, nice play. A couple of Batavia players are back and decide, hey, I'm not the guard, let's get it back and bring it up. Pass inside of Fenara, knocked away out of bounds. 38-35, Batavia up by three with 2.38 to go here in the third quarter. Well, Notre Dame's, uh, they've, they've really done some good things as Otis Thomas gets a free look at the basket. He took his man opposite on that move, then went to the middle. He faked to the outside wing, then stepped to the middle. Beautiful move, and that's how you teach young men to, to succeed in a man-to-man -man offense. That'll drive coaches nuts when an inbound pass when you get a player open like that underneath the basket. Yes, it does. He was being guarded full-fronted, and uh, he made a nice step and then took his man the opposite way. Well, Notre Dame is within a point. They have the basketball. It's 38-37. Batavia got out quickly here in the third quarter, but they haven't scored in the last four minutes. And here comes Batavia now trying to break that. Herline's going to be fouled, so Brian Herline will go to the free throw line. Nice jump stop by Brian Herline. He had the herd behind him. He had the, the cattle behind him, and he decided, I, I'm not going to go up. I'm going to come to a jump stop, at least get myself the opportunity to shoot two and potentially get a three-point play. And after four minutes and two seconds, her line breaks the streak for Batavia as he hits the first of two, and that opens up a two-point lead. And he hits the second one as well. So it's 40-37. With two minutes to go here in the third quarter, Thomas trying to take it in, but Griffin cut him off. And then Thomas lost it. And I think Griffin got the hand back in there to knock it away. Gerger, nice pass to Higgins, cutting down. They got a little triangle there against this offense right now. They put a man in the post, they put a man on the wing in the corner, and they say, all right, you're going to give me something. You're going to give me a jumper, or you're going to give me a post cut, and that's what they got. And that was a real nice play there, the pass going to Paul Rogers, who was cutting in back door, and Rogers with the basket to pull Notre Dame to within three. So a couple of nice plays at both ends for both teams on their last trips down the floor. Yes, and that's what these coaches teach, which is nice to see that both of these coaches are seeing the reinforcement that uh, they stress during their times together in practice. Griffin stepping in front of Thomas, but he's going to be whistled with the foul. And the foul number 44, Bob Griffin. Bob Griffin picking up his third personal foul. He'll come out of the game. Nesbitt coming back in along with Scott Partridge. Brian Herline coming out of the game as well for Batavia. Mentioned at the beginning, Buddy Brasky really using that bench this year as he makes a lot of substitutions throughout the course of the game. Yes, Rick, you bring up a good point because that can be a factor as Kevin Rogers scores on a nice layup pass from Vin Fanera. That basket pulling Notre Dame within one again. It's 42, 41, 45 seconds remaining. Rogers knocking away. Thomas, can he get it? No, but it goes over to Rogers, so Notre Dame does have it. Benar trying to drive inside. Passing to Reddick. Reddick gets his hands on it. Off the glass. It's going to go. Boy, Vinny Panera, uh, you know, I can't crawl inside his head, but he drives baseline. Good visual contact of the floor. Sees Reddick cutting to the basket, even though Alex Nesbitt is guarding him. That's a mismatch. Nice pass into Reddick. Reddick shoots the basketball up, gets the basket, and now an opportunity for a three-point play. And Notre Dame grabbing the lead on that basket. And Reddick finishing up three-point lead to give Notre Dame a two-point lead. It's 44-42 with 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Well, Batavia had a four-point halftime lead, and Notre Dame has fought back to take a two-point lead after getting down by nine the first minute into this third quarter of play. Batavia with the clock off down to ten, looking for the last shot here, and it goes out of bounds. 
Mark Thompson looking up for the pass before he had the ball and it went out of bounds. So that with seven hurts. seconds left, Notre Dame with plenty of time to get a final shot. That one hurts, it's seven seconds left. Fanara with five. Getting it over to Rodgers. Kevin Rodgers, shot just long, horn goes. We completed three. Notre Dame 44, Batavia 42. We'll take a quick 30 seconds, come back for the start of the fourth quarter right after this. The ladies and I used to sit around and play cards, knit, and watch the soaps. We made quite a team. Then one day, Helen heard about strength training. She got a free fact sheet just by calling 1-800-222-2225. We found lifting weights builds muscles and bones. It improves our balance, too. So now when we get together, we exercise. It really gives us a lift. Give yourself a lift. Call for a free fact sheet. Rick Krasinski back with Tim Sullivan live from Genesee Community College in Batavia. And we've completed three quarters of play in this 15th annual Batavia Lions Club Holiday Tournament. And the Notre Dame Irish have a two point lead over the Batavia High Blue Devils 44 42 as we are set to start this fourth. And I won't say final quarter, Tim, because we've been here many times for overtime games throughout the years. And the way this game has been seesawing back and forth, I think we should just go into overtime and let it finish that way. Yes, it is, and uh, we're seeing a very balanced, even game, just what we predicted here. So Notre Dame getting the basketball to start this fourth quarter play. Otis Thomas with it, Bob Griffin against him. Thomas driving inside, doesn't go. Fanar tapping it back up, and Ruddick's going to get it for Notre Dame. Kevin Rogers, and he's going to be hit by Alex Nesbitt. His second foul, and the fifth team foul on Batavia here. Notre Dame with three team fouls. Tom is going to take the three a little strong, but Kevin Rogers saved it, but Fanara just had his foot on the paint on the baseline. One thing about uh, Otis's shot, if you take a look at it, just he, he gets the ball up in the air. He, he, you know, he does, he does everything right, and he's been shooting the ball real well this year. Is it, That was a makeable shot for him. Griffin getting the pass back over to her line. Ricky Lundy in the corner with it back out on top. Davey will set it up again quickly into McFallens. They like to go into McFallens. McFallens quickly, Tim, will kick it back out. Trying to get the zone while it's shifting to hit that open wing. Yes, and the key is, as Bobby Griffin takes a shot, is and Ricky Lundy gets the rebound, is to get the ball in a sharp pass situation because if you get the ball up in the air the, all the defense will do is shift and rotate but those quick passes as McMullins has been making is what beats a zone along with ball fakes and good shooting. Paul Rogers with a skate save and a beauty. Tavio will keep it and they'll reset the 45 second clock. Here's McFallins this time he's going to turn around take the shot doesn't go Paul Rogers getting the rebound to Fanera. Did everything right. Turned and looked, presented himself well, pump fake, took a dribble to his left side, and took a nice shot at the basket. Wrist roll, nice wrist roll, pass to Rogers. Just short. And Griffin coming up with the rebound. He'll bring it back himself. Whoa, a travel call before the hit. Yep. He just had it wasn't quite set with the feet the way he wanted, and he tried to take an extra half step to get himself set and got nailed for it. Yes, Mike Reddick, uh, again, just stood there and waited for him and was in good position right there as Bobby really didn't have a choice. Six and a half to go now in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame 44, Batavia 42. Right now they're trying to full front Mike Reddick, which is, uh, I believe, caused a turnover. Nice defense by McFarlane. Thomas, nice pass over and the basket. Brian Herline getting it, but... Out of that basket to Aaron McFarlane's because of the defense on Mike Reddick, which caused a turnover and a two-on-one Bobby Griffin pass for a basket. That basket tying it up again, 44-44, six minutes to go here. And a foul on Vinny Panera. On the pick as he's getting called for taking both his arms and pushing away. Well... 
You know, there's 10 people on the floor. A referee can only look one or two places in a quick moment, and that's where his eyes were because there's a lot of it going on out there right now, Rick. Furline back out on top. Nesbitt trying to drive inside, kicking it over to Griffin. Ricky Lundy's going to take it. He's got it. This Griffin, uh, he's making some nice sharp passes, uh, cutting that defense right in half. He's got a quick little release on that pass, doesn't he? Snaps it real quick. Yes, he does. He, he's, he's moving the basketball with a pass, and that's what you want to do against the zone. Here's Reddick. Turn around. He's got it. As Notre Dame again. Nice outside-in pass to Mike Reddick. Turn around baseline jumper. 13 for Reddick. Ties it again. 46-46. 5 10 to go here in the fourth. And we should remind everybody that we'll stay here as Griffin gets that quick pass again to Lundy off the glass. Doesn't go tapped by Reddick. Out of bounds. But we'll stay right here after Tim as we'll have the award ceremony with the naming of the all-tournament team along with the most valuable player for this 1996 Lions Club tournament. Five minutes now on the clock to go here in the fourth. Alex Nesbitt's going to pull it back out. Erline thought about it. Now he's going to take it. Wasn't quite sure, Tim. You could see in his mind he wanted to. Then he said, no, okay, I will. And he never really got himself set right. And that's all part of the confidence. Yes, it's training and, and making sure you get the right shot. But, you know, you got to know, I'm going. I'm going. This is a good opportunity. It's a good shot. It's going up. Or I'm going to create one and go or get the ball to someone who's in a better position to shoot us. Otis Thomas hits a nice three-point basket. Otis with a side. big second half. That's his ninth point, 11th overall, but nine here in the second half for Otis Thomas. The fouls turn around, shot miss, and there's Otis Thomas with the rebound. Quickly coming back for Notre Dame. Stepping around her line, lost it though, and it goes out of bounds to go back to Batavia. Otis a little pumped up though. He hit the big three, came down, wanted to come back, create something more. Lost the handle though, went out of bounds. And uh, Batavia High did get back quick, quickly on defense, which which helped uh, stop Otis Thomas from. And Thomas right there got a hand in. Which way they're going to call it? They're going to keep it here. Otis Thomas getting the hand in there to knock it away. Chuck Higgins coming into the game for Batavia. He'll replace Aaron McFallins. Clock stop, 4.03 to go. Notre Dame with a three-point lead, 49-46. Well, now Coach Bransky here is doing something real interesting. You got Griffin and... And uh, McFarland's on the bench, uh, hoping maybe to get a, a two-minute plunge, a quick, fresh run out of those guys and see what happens as Lundy, or Herdline attempts a three. And it's tapped out of bounds by Lundy. Herdline shot just hitting off the back of the rim. So Notre Dame will hang on to that three-point lead. It's 49-46 with 3.49 to go. Lundy putting on backcourt pressure, almost had it. And there's this element of surprise again. You, 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 you get consistent at doing something. You, you run a half court, one up, full court pressure, half court pressure, and then all of a sudden you go full, and that's what happens right there. Lundy got it that time. He came close, and that time he got it. Nesbitt over to Thompson, back out on top. And that's that's the idea. Keep your keep a team off balance, and and that's what uh, Batavia High has done on four or five possessions this evening. Long cross-court pass, pulled down by her line. Batavia setting it up once again. Shot clock down to 15. Nesbitt trying to drive inside. Kevin Rogers got a hand at it. Now the ball's loose, and Batavia's going to keep it. Thompson squaring up, doesn't go. Rebounded by her line. Her line again back out. Higgins driving inside, nice pass back. A little low maybe, nice idea. Then he got it back. And a foul, I think, going against Notre Dame, Tim. That was quite an active few moments of basketball right there. Bob Griffin, Aaron McFollins, and Scott Partridge. No, Partridge not going into the game. Right now, Batavia High might uh, be to their advantage to take a few ball fakes. You swing your arms one way with the ball, the whole defense will move. Griffin, nice pass into Higgins. It's going to go. He'll go to the free throw line. But Griffin again with the nice look. Found Chuck Higgins. Got it to him. Then Higgins was fouled. Batavia High, what they're doing well tonight is their players are positioned in, in, a, in the perfect situation 
in terms of the defense. Notre Dame's in a 2-3. They're getting the ball to the middle. They're getting the ball to the wings, and, and as a result, getting the ball into good opportunities to shoot the basket. Begins chance, though, to tie it up. His free throw is missed, so Notre Dame with a one-point lead. 49, 48, two minutes, 45 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Paul Rogers, nice pass to his brother Kevin. The shot's up and in. Well, we've had a few Rogers to Rogers, and uh, there's another one. Kevin Rogers with eight points after that basket to give Notre Dame a three point lead. Griffin getting it over the three pointer, just missed as her line took the shot and a traveling call. Nesbeth and Ricky Lundy coming back in for Batavia. Replaced Chuck Higgins and Mark Thompson. 51-48, Notre Dame up by three, 226. Remaining here in this fourth quarter. Farah getting it in. Thomas up to Reddick, foul. Reddick's gonna go to the free throw line. It'll either be Griffin or Nesbeth with the foul. Well, the nice thing about Mike Reddick, his size is to his advantage, obviously, in the paint area, but Mike is, is also a player that can play on the perimeter if need be and a lot of times that's a very difficult pass to make an over the top of another defender pass while mike is heading toward the basket to handle the ball and further the ball toward the basket and he did that real well as he gathered the ball dribbled with his left hand and was driving up for a basket bob griffin picking up the foul for batavia that's his fourth and Rex second free throw miss but finaris after rogers kept it alive and Griffin finally getting it for Batavia. The first free throw though giving uh, Notre Dame a 52 to 48 lead. Griffin coming back the other way over to Nesbitt. They'll track it down before it goes out of bounds. Back on top. Griffin, he'll take the three. A little long and Kevin Rogers running it down or make that Paul Rogers running it down in the corner. So Notre Dame just inside the two minute mark with a four point lead and the basketball. Here's Thomas, driving inside, nice dish to Reddick, it's gonna go! Nice dish off though, and there's the passing I've been talking about. Another great pass inside to an open Reddick who got the basket and will go to the free throw line. That's how you're supposed to do it. Good floor presence by Otis Thomas. Great vision, came to a jump stop, and while he was in the air, he then got the ball to Mike Reddick and then came to a two foot control jump stop. Beautiful move. Basket up by Mike Reddick, and now he's going to get an opportunity to shoot a free throw. Well, we were off at halftime. We were talking about Otis Thomas, and you were talking about uh, what this kid can do, and he's come out here in the second half and showed everything you were talking about. He's had a great second half for Notre Dame, and they have a six-point lead. That pass right there to an open Mike Reddick, giving Notre Dame the six-point lead, and Reddick with a chance to make a seven, and we're down to 149 all of a sudden, so clock starting to become a little bit of a factor here for Batavia, Tim. Yes, it is, and um, Otis Thomas is is having himself one heck of a ball game, and also all of the Notre Dame players. But th what Otis Thomas is doing, he's breaking the defense down. He's uh, he's he's breaking that man-to-man -man down. He's penetrating, which takes away all the rules and principles of the man-to-man -man because they got to leave their player to, and somebody else is going to be open. Well, you know, you just don't realize how important it is for a point guard to be able to drive inside like that. Because if you beat your man, somebody's got to pick you up. That means somebody's open. You either get the shot, you get the dish inside, you get the easy basket. That's where the vision comes in. And, uh, and we saw that just a few moments ago. Reddick shot just missing. So that keeps Batavia within six, which is a two possession. Yes, now's the time for Batavia High to start thinking about possessions and, and uh, how many scores they need to come back and be a part of this ball game. Her line long pass to Thompson. Back to Griffin. Griffin's going to drive inside. And he traveled. He lost the handle, and he slid the foot as he tried to get it back, Tim. Yes, he did. You know, he did everything right there. He made the right decision. He drove because the defense was extended. He came to a jump stop and just slid a little bit. Uh, but you notice both times he's traveled, he's made the baskets. There's so. Lundy, though, with the interception. Doesn't get it. Perline getting the rebound and a jump ball. So Lundy got the interception, missed the shot. Herline was there. And possession error, though, is in Batavia's favor. So Batavia's going to keep the basketball. 
Ricky Lundy making a good defensive steal. Uh, the referee was right, right on top of the play as Brian Herdline hustled to get the rebound, and a uh, good call was made. So for Batavia, they had the possession arrow. They get to keep the basketball. 115 remaining. Batavia down by six. Well, Rick, you don't need a three right now with a minute 10 left. Griffin's going to try it, though. It's missed. There's Reddick with the rebound for Notre Dame, and we're down to 103. Obviously, you take with the defense. There's Otis, and he's fouled. Doesn't go, but he'll go to the free throw line. Kind of feel Otis kind of taking this game over in the last couple minutes, can't you? Yeah, see, he, what he's doing is he, he's driving the lane, and if his player leaves him, he's giving up the basketball. If, if he doesn't, and he's got a lane, and he's got a shoulder, he's choosing that shoulder and driving right to the basket. Clock stop with exactly one minute to go here in the fourth. Notre Dame with a six-point lead. It's 54-48. And Otis Thomas at the free throw line. First one goes in. Now it's a three possession for Batavia. Yes, that was a big foul shot right there. Second one in as well, 56-48. Clock starts, we're inside a minute to go. Well, right now Batavia High's gotta get, get something up here. Two points is fine, and now get the basketball. Nice pass inside to Lundy, missed it, gets the rebound, put it back, he's fouled, and that's what Batavia needs to be able to go to the free throw line, Tim. The clock is stopped, a chance to get a couple points while the clock is stopped. Yes, Coach brasky has been very aggressive in his defense all evening, and I, I'm sure that you're gonna see Coach Brasky coming right after the ball, getting the basketball and trying to stop the clock as both teams are in the bonus, and um, that means that Notre Dame's gonna have to sink the ball at the free throw line. Buddy Brasky playing a little offense defense as he brings Alex Nesmith back in here, replace Mark Thompson. Thompson hitting three three-pointers in the first half. He hasn't scored here, but you can see in the last few minutes he's been switching them, depending pretty much on offense and defense. And right now with Lundy at the free throw line, hoping he makes both of them and he'll be into the defensive mode. First one's in. And if he can hit this one, he can pull Batavia to within six, and that would be two possessions. So a big free throw right here for Lundy. Off the back of the rim, though, Otis Thomas had position. He's fouled, so he'll go to the free throw line. And now Thompson will come back into the game. This time, though, he'll replace Chuck Higgins. No, he'll replace Nesman. And Notre Dame now into the bonus on that foul, so Otis Thomas at the line to shoot one and one. And it doesn't go. Higgins with the rebound, 42 seconds to go, 56-49. And that's what he's in for, doesn't go. Bounce around, here's Otis Thomas ahead of everybody. Otis, McFarland's coming back with the fouls. He got the arm of Otis Thomas, but Thomas again will be going to the free throw line for Notre Dame. Yes, Thompson had the look, and again, he was just long. He's really on the mark, and rebound, Otis Thomas takes the ball coast to coast and gets a good opportunity to score two points. That's a big, big transition opportunity for Notre Dame. Because you look at this situation, Thompson hits that shot, all of a sudden it's 52-56, 30 seconds left, two possessions to tie. So still a lot can happen with a six point lead, a seven point lead for Notre Dame. Otis trying to make it eight right here. Does not the front of the ribbon. Higgins doing just what you're supposed to as he stepped in front of Thomas as the rebound would have came right back to him. Higgins back up on top. He's going to take the three. Little long. Reddick got the hand on it. Tapped it over to Fanara with only 15 seconds left. Fanara killing some clock over to Thomas. And now Thomas is going to be fouled, but only 10 seconds remaining. Well, you can look at a lot of things in a ball game, and, and, and both teams very evenly matched. And you know, you can 
talk about the chess matches and X's and O's and all that kind of stuff. Bottom line is the ball's got to go through the cylinder. And uh, Latavia High had some good opportunities, some good looks at the basket, and unfortunately for both teams, the ball doesn't go in all the time. Otis missing the free throw. And at this point, I don't think it's really going to matter, Tim. There's only 10 seconds remaining. It's a seven-point Notre Dame lead, 56-49. Second one missed, rebounded. Lundy has it. We're down to five seconds. Lundy will pull up, take the shot. Short, going out of bounds, stopping the clock with only three seconds left. Notre Dame's going to have it. Notre Dame is going to be the 1996 Batavia Lions Club champions. As Batavia was looking to repeat, but Notre Dame came in. Great ball game. We were hoping to have one, Tim. We got it. And Notre Dame, with a strong fourth quarter, can come away with a 56-49 win over the Batavia High Blue Devils. Batavia in the third quarter coming out, Tim, with a real quick start. They scored the first five points. But then Notre Dame scoring the next four and eventually taking the lead. It was 44-42, Notre Dame at the end of three. And then Notre Dame goes on to score 12 more points. Dallas scoring 12 to seven here in the fourth quarter. And Notre Dame coming away with a 56 to 49 win over the Batavia Blue Devils. Yeah, Rick, it was, uh, again, just what we asked for in the ball game. What happened was is Batavia High really played a, a Super Bowl game, pressed, changed defenses, and uh, made Notre Dame make decisions uh, and, and not always come up with the best opportunity to score a basket. And Batavia High was able to capitalize on good fast break opportunities and good shooting. On the other side, Notre Dame. Again, stayed in their matchup 2-3 zone. Uh, Batavia High beat it and scored off it, was able to run. But again, Otis Thomas sparked this ball club in getting the ball to all the right people. Good aggressive offensive rebounding on Notre Dame's behalf early and also in the second half. And the keys being Otis Thomas penetrating, getting the ball to different people, and giving himself scoring opportunities. We had a lot of fun watching this ball game tonight and seeing these two teams, Rick, really just show a lot of athleticism going up and down the floor. Well, that's what we talked about, Tim, at the beginning of tonight's game was both the teams and the athletes that they had on it. And the first half, both teams coming out up and down the floor, lead changes. Many of them, Batavia coming out here in the start of the third quarter, getting that quick five points in the first 53 seconds of it. Notre Dame taking the timeout. And then common things down is Batavia had opened up a nine point lead. But then Notre Dame started nipping away and comes away with the 56 49 win. Right now they're tabulating up the, the votes for the all tournament team. And we'll stay here for that. We'll have the all-tournament team along with the most valuable player for this year's tournament. So with the win, Notre Dame remaining unbeaten as they raise their record to 8-0. and oh. And for the Batavia High Blue Devils, with the loss, they go back to 504-4. and four. But Buddy Brasky with a young, aggressive team. They're off to a pretty good start this year. And I'm sure Buddy Brasky and his Batavia High Blue Devils will be looking forward to the second half of this basketball season. Yes, uh, Batavia High has been very competitive in their, their game play throughout their Monroe County League run. And what they have done is they have really stepped up the defense. They're very aggressive and, and they're very young also. They. They uh, had a great JV team last year, was very competitive in that Monroe County League, and now step up on diversity and prove that they can compete in the Monroe County League. On the other side, Notre Dame, they're, they're really dominating to this point the Genesee Region League. They're showing a lot of good 
aggressive play, moving the ball, and cutting to the basket. And, and whatever defense they throw at you, they seem to be able to, to handle. Recap the scoring in just a minute here. Tim Otis Thomas, a strong second half for Notre Dame as he kind of took that game over the fourth quarter. Missed a few free throws at the end, but at that point, Notre Dame with the seven-point lead, and they held on for that. But Thomas with a strong second half, and some, we were talking about making some key drives to the basket where he could either take the shot or dish off and converting some points off of that. Well, yeah, you know, we've been generalizing the last few moments on what both teams have been doing well, but the bottom line was, was, was Otis Thomas uh, at the end, playing some real good defense. You saw him early, or early on in the fourth quarter, diving and, and hitting the ball off of Batavia High player and having it go into the bleachers and Notre Dame getting the ball when they were down seven points. Then, then you just see the character of Notre Dame and, and how they, they pushed the ball, they got the ball to the right people, and were able to score. There's just a lot of factors that that uh, helped Notre Dame to uh, overcome Batavia High's substitutions, which we thought would be a factor at the end of the game, but really wasn't. Uh, Batavia High was well rested. They subbed real well, but uh, Notre Dame's players, the, the few that they used, were in very good shape to continue and, and hold that game for a victory. While well, we're waiting for them to tabulate the votes, we'll run down the scoring in tonight's game. We'll start with Notre Dame as they were the 56 to 49 winners over Batavia. Leading the way, the guy at the beginning of the game, who you said would be the key for Notre Dame, Mike Reddick. Well, he finished as the high score for the game. Mike Reddick finishing with 16 points. Right behind him, Otis Thomas, a strong second half. Thomas with 13 points in the game, 11 of those coming in the second half of play. Paul Rogers, strong game, finishing up with 12 points and his brother Kevin steady throughout two points in each of the quarters he finishes with eight points Vinny Fanara finishing with five and Mike Sisson with a basket for the Batavia High Blue Devils it was Mark Thompson along with Aaron McFarlane both with nine points Ricky Lundy and Brian Herdline both finishing with seven Chuck Higgins finishing with eight points Bob Griffin with four and Scott Partridge finishing with three points but a 56 to 49 win for the Notre Dame Irish well, you know, Rick, it's it's funny that we talked about it in the beginning of the, the game on what uh, what would be some factors that uh, that both teams would have to deal with, and and Mike Reddick, yes, uh, you know, he he did seem to be a deciding factor, but I I have to say, and that's why they play the games out. Otis Thomas, I feel, uh, stepped up and and was a factor. This is a team game, and you need to include everyone, and in, as a in a unison which is very important, but he stepped up on a few possessions and, and really just, you know, stepped his game play up and, and played like a senior with, with real good character. And again, in case you're just joining us, we're just waiting for them to tabulate the voting for the naming of the all-tournament team and, of course, along with the most valuable player. And usually what will happen in a case like this, Tim, we'll probably see a player off of Oakfield and off of Alexander, and then the remaining players, I would assume, would be coming from Batavia and Notre Dame. In the consolation game tonight, it was the Oakfield Alabama Hornets defeating Alexander by a score of 47 to 36 in that game. And then the game you just watched here, the championship game, Notre Dame with a 56 49 win over the Batavia High Blue Devils. Well, Rick, we. I know we did this last year. We, uh, when they picked the all-star team, you and I tried to pick who we thought would be uh, be the all-MVP uh, for the Lions Club tournament. And do you want to go ahead and uh, make our picks again this year? Well, my guess at MVP, it's going to be one or two, and it'll come from the winning team. It'll either be Otis Thomas or Mike Reddick. What do you think, pretty safe guess? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm going to go with you there. And, uh, I, I'm in. The, I'm along the same line on that uh, decision, and uh, I think we're going to get one of those two uh, with the MVP. All right, I think this is the third place trophy. Matt Luxon picking it up for Oakfield. 
And the second place trophy going to Batavia. And the championship trophy going to Notre Dame. And for Notre Dame, the fifth time that they have won this tournament, the 15th annual. And now we'll get to the naming of the all-tournament team. And Matt Luxon from Oakfield, Alabama. Matt's still here. Nice, uh, good player. He presents himself well, very strong, unselfish. He had a real nice tournament on a nice ball club. And from Batavia, Brian Herline. Brian Herline with a strong opening game as he finished that game with 18 points. Finishing tonight's game with seven. Bob Griffin, also a strong tournament. Yes, uh, Brian Herline, very unselfish. And uh, Bobby Griffin, just uh, yeah, an Otis Thomas type of player if you want to compare. They both play that same style. Vinny Pinar and Otis Thomas from Notre Dame. So I guess that answers the question. <laughs> Vin Finero, Otis Thomas, both pivotal players. Vinny, a uh, lot of rebounds, real good defense, floor leader. Otis Thomas, his his uh, his results were obvious tonight, but Vin Finero, he's well deserving young man. He does a lot of good things on the floor and uh, just just a true player as Mike Reddick receives the MVP of the tournament. Reddick with a strong tournament. Mike Reddick finishing tonight's game with 16 points and he had 13 in the opening night win on Saturday against Oakfield. So the Notre Dame Irish defeating Batavia 56 to 49. This reminder join us this Saturday night at 630 as we'll be back here for the girls rotary tournament. We'll be on the air for the consolation game at 6.30 and then the championship game set to go somewhere between 8.30, quarter nine. Tim, you'll be back for that as well. That tournament actually kicking off this Thursday night with the opening tip off at 6.30. We will not be here for a cable cast on Thursday, but we'll be here Saturday for the consolation game and the championship game. So once again, the final score from Tennessee Community College in Batavia, it was the Notre Dame Irish defeating Batavia High by a score of 56 to 49. For Tim Sullivan, I'm Rick Krasinski. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody.